Hi, it's Paul from Heritage. So we're just measuring up uh, for some automated blinds at this house. So I'm just gonna show you what we've got at the minute and you know, kind of what they, what they want to achieve as well. And I'll show you our sample blind as well. So we, what we show customers uh, when we come to visit sites. So at the minute we've got traditional roller blind style with um, pull cords on each one. So these, there's bay windows across the front uh, of the house and they've all got these so as the light travels from one side of the building to the other it can be quite dazzling, it can bleach expensive furniture um, and the, these guys are running around you know like they're down in obviously over through the night because they don't want people seeing in and then in the morning it's like right go and put them, pull them all up and then um, you know as it gets a bit dazzling it's like right pull them all down again and so uh, with a bigger house with lots of windows it's easier for these to be automated uh, and set for schedules or sunset sunrise or particular times of the day you want them to be down due to the sun glare you know there's all this programming that can go into these blinds which makes a life a lot easier easier in a bigger house so we've got these three windows to do bay windows to do in here and then we've got these two as well and then that one over there so we're starting with this room I'm going to get them a price together for this room we'll fit this room as you can see yeah just your standard rollers also what the concern with as well if they've got um, grandkids and these cords flapping around you know that kids can get their hands on and pull and things so these they're completely cordless as because they're motorized there's no cords dangling down that kids can grab hold of so it's a lot safer for children as well so let's just have a look so this is the first room i'm gonna like i said price but give you the gist of what we're trying to achieve so you've got all these that are open and closed every day Those are nice views when the weather's a bit better. <laughs> and then another room here. And this is just, you know, there's the other sides to do another high level windows that are difficult to reach on staircases and things. But this is, you know, all the way through here, through there, through there. So there's lots of blinds and we're trying to make their lives a bit easier with this stuff. So what we're looking at here is there's, we need to mount these brackets, but we haven't really got anything to mount to. It's just an architrave. So we're going to have to do something about fixings. So we need these to be mounted on here. It's going to have an architectural fascia on it. So it's a surface mount uh, blind on inset because these windows are wide enough to inset, inset them. And then also they have an inward opening window. So these open and tilt, tilt inwards at the top. So there's these considerations that we've got to take into account here as well. So it either tips forward or it swings fully open on the hinges there. So we need to make sure that when we mount these blinds, they are up out of the way of the window. So they can, whereas you can see here, these can interfere with the opening of the window. So we need to mount ours up here. We've got limited space with the ceiling. And the only thing we've got here is this architrave. So we need to sort something out here because we want the blind running down the surface of the architrave so it lets minimal light through but we need a good reliable fixing so we're going to have to get some alterations done here like a a nice piece of timber at the top cut the architraves 
and finish the actuators up to a piece of timber and mount that flat piece of timber right across the top, screw that to the wall properly and then mount the blinds to that because if we mount into this, these are only pinned in architraves usually. So there's a few pins in there just holding them in place because this is a decorative finish, it's not structural. So I'd, I wouldn't want to, customers suggested it, but I wouldn't want to fix these. We need a good solid fixing because these blinds can be, once you've got 12 cells, 12 cells in them like batteries they can be with the architectural aluminium fascia 12 batteries plus the weight of the blind it can be fairly heavy and we won't want anything falling down seeing as well because they're very expensive that's what we've got to take into account here so there's a bit of prep needs doing so i'm measuring these up based on us are going to be fitting them here above the window on a on a plate that isn't here yet so that's what I'm taking my measurements off currently, but this is going to have to be done. So here's an example of, uh, here's the blind example that we would take to customers' houses who want to see this product first, just so they can get their hands on it, check what the material quality is like, see how it functions. So we'll do a a more in-depth video on this um, another time because there's different fascias you can have architectural fabric fascias and different cell you know amount of batteries in them and tethered non-tethered um, so there's we'll do a bit more of an in-depth video another time so this is a basic setup so it comes with a pico on a little pedestal so it can be left on a table or a bedside cabinet or something like that. And then you can see you've got the uh, shade at the top open and then minor adjustment in the middle up and down and then fully closed. And we can do some programming from this to set the, when we want the blind to stop. So if, for example, if we just ran this all the way down and kept our finger on that, it would just run hit the floor and start to coil up. So we have to set points that we want it to start from and we want it to finish to and that's dependent on the height of the window. So this is obviously just a small example window frame. And as you can see, it's this is an in-frame mount, a recessed. So it's set in to the frame. So there's a minimum depth of frame that we need to be able to set set these in. Otherwise, like we've got in this place here, um, is the options are surface mount. So you can have a, a fabric fascia on the surface or you can have an architectural fascia, fascia which is made from aluminium and is painted. So this is a, a typical inset installation so we'll so you've got we'll push the blind down to the all the way to the bottom and then that stops at the set point there before it finishes and hits the bottom. That's what I've programmed it to finish at. And then we can set on this middle button. So we can do minor adjustments with the, just with the up and down, if we just want to adjust it, that one particular window to a specific height. And then this, so I'll fully open it again. Yep. And then you've got this middle button here, we can program to set it to whatever height you want so for example say if you've got 10 of these blinds all on the ground floor and at a certain time of day you wanted them halfway down well, what we can do is we can you, you push and hold that button to program that so let's put it down to say there I'll put it down to there so say we want 10 of these blinds to all simultaneously go down to that level. We'll push and hold this middle button until the light 
flashes on it. There we go. So that's now set to that to that height. And we can also use one button to operate, you know, ten ten blinds if we want to. It doesn't it doesn't have to be a Pico per blind. So let's put that back up. Now instead of to the bottom, we'll just push our preset. And that's where we've just programmed that to stop. So we can just say 10 blinds preset at a certain time of day for the light or whatever reasons you might want it at a certain level. And then also you've got the app uh, and the, you can program all this and schedule and um, it's got the sunset sunrise built into it. So they can all be set to open at sunrise and close at sunset and etc. So there's loads of programming that we can do with these as well. So very impressive. A premium bit of kit definitely fabrics are very nice and the technology is is probably one of the best I'd say Lutron have been doing stuff for a long time they've been doing control lighting controls and the controls for a long time so that's what we'd is in our example blind let's have a quick look at it now as well a bit closer so this fascia drops down so as, as like I said before it's in, in set you can see it's just protruding slightly so if you've got a nice thick window sill we can recess it right in um, and you know all this will be into the unit so this is a non-tethered so it's a wireless system so there's there's your six D type batteries so if the blind is wider than this we can get 12 cells in it so the advice from Lutron is if you were going to use this blind and you've got the option of fitting 12, 12 batteries in do it because it's obviously going to last a lot longer but the life on these is something mental like five years or something like that and even with six cells Dependent on how heavily you're using it, but I'm pretty sure it was it was five years. Um, that they, re they recommend it should it will last, which is very impressive to say they're up and down every day. So yeah, it'd be better to fit the 12 cells if you can. So yeah, this pops down. You can replace the batteries, and then it just pops back up nice and neat like that. So real good piece of kit. If you were to get the tethered version, which is wired. Um, the actual fascia is a lot thinner so the only reason why this fascia is chunky is because it's got to hide these batteries so if we get a wired fascia we can it will reduce the height of the the you know the exposed fascia that we see here so that's another option as well if your house is in like first fixed stages of an installation and you've got the opportunity to put some cables in you know you can put some cables in but there's the wireless it's still a wireless signal to the unit so even though it's powered the tethering is only for the power supply it's not for the control so these uh, triathlon blinds are either battery and a wireless signal to operate or mains powered and a wireless signal to operate and it then integrates with your like in this guy's house we've already got some ra2 stuff and a hub controlling is which i've done another video for which is controlling all this outside man cave so if we've already got it can just integrate into a system that you've already got or you can add some stuff onto your light you can add lighting onto it as well if you just have the blinds it's a really good adaptable system hi it's paul from heritage so we're just measuring up uh, for some automated blinds at this house so i'm just gonna show you what we've got at the minute and you know kind of what they what they want to achieve as well and i'll show you our sample blind as well so we, what we show customers uh, when we come to visit sites so at the minute we've got traditional roller blind style with um pull cords on each one so these there's bay windows across the front uh, of the house and 
they've all got these so as the light travels from one side of the building to the other it can be quite dazzling it can bleach expensive furniture um, and the, these guys are running around you know like the downing obviously over through the night because they don't want people seeing in and then in the morning it's like right go and put them pull them all up and then um you know as it gets a bit dazzling it's like right pull them all down again and so uh, with a bigger house with lots of windows it's easier for these to be automated uh, and set for schedules or sunset sunrise um or particular times of the day you want them to be down due to the sun glare you know there's all this programming that can go into these blinds which makes a life a lot easier easier in a bigger house so we've got these three windows to do bay windows to do in here and then we've got these two as well and then that one over there so we're starting with this room I'm going to get them a price together for this room we'll fit this room as you can see yeah just your standard rollers also what the concern with as well if they've got um, grandkids and these cords flapping around you know that kids can get their hands on and pull and things so these they're completely cordless as because they're motorized there's no cords dangling down that kids can grab hold of so it's a lot safer for children as well so let's just have a look so this is the first room i'm gonna like i said price but give you the gist of what we're trying to achieve so you've got all these that are open and closed every day Those are nice views when the weather's a bit better. <laughs> and then another room here. And this is just, you know, there's the other sides to do another high level windows that are difficult to reach on staircases and things. But this is, you know, all the way through here, through there, through there. So there's lots of blinds and we're trying to make their lives a bit easier with this stuff. <coughs> so what we're looking at here is there's, we need to mount these brackets, but we haven't really got anything to mount. So my idea was to cut the architraves off there straight across so it lines up with the top of this window sill. Same that side and then insert a piece of timber in here either finishing perfectly on the edge with this architrave and like a line with that or it could overhang overhang a bit whatever looks nicest so a, a, a nice flat piece of timber that goes between there and up to the ceiling all the way across and take this top architrave off and then this architrave will butt up into the bottom of this piece of timber that goes across and give it a, a decent finish just get rid of this mitre 